Joints in the car, I could have had, I mean, I could have seen a stronger uh, defense than that. I'm glad he's not my defense attorney if I got picked up for something. Um, it's not just the Washington Post, it's for it, the New York Times. Um, and not just Fox News, I should. It's New York Times and Washington Post, too. Yeah. Look, the, this, the author of this, Peter Schweitzer, is a very meticulous, detail-oriented person. He's got a good reputation as a, a conscientious researcher and a careful writer. And uh, my suspicion is, is that when this book is fully revealed on May 5th, this is going to cause a lot of indigestion inside Clinton. Well, the, we haven't, I'm looking because I haven't seen the book, and, and the book, the people who publish these books, they always put out the most salacious things ever, and we take it like red beet bait, you know, everyone seizes upon it. Um, but, you know, they are sort of, I mean, if, if they're like even 20% accurate, there's a problem here. Yeah, look, uh, the, 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 the question is going to be this. Was there a pattern of the Clintons receiving money, either at the Clinton Foundation or in their own personal pocketbook, in a time frame that causes you to look at official actions being done, meetings being taken, decisions being made that would benefit those, the people who gave them. That's the first question. But the second question is one that we can easily answer now, which is, was it appropriate for her, while she was Secretary of State, to have allowed the, the Clinton Foundation to receive foreign contributions from foreign governments and foreign individuals in violation of the agreement that she made with her own boss, the President of the United States, Barack Obama, before she took the job. And we now know that they received contributions that were in violation of that agreement. And then another question is, is it appropriate for her at a time when she's thinking about running for president? And it's clear that everybody knows she's run, thinking about running for president to have further accepted foreign contributions. Is that a smart thing? Did those, get the, those foreign donors or those foreign governments say, you know what, we're going to be currying favor with the person who's going to be the Democratic nominee for president. You know, I, I haven't seen the book. Nobody's seen the book yet except for I may a few who have gotten an embargoed copy of it. And I don't know, like, you know whether all the allegations are true or not, so I'm a little bit hesitant you know, to seize upon this. But what I don't understand is that I suspected when she left the Secretary of State as Secretary of State, she knew she might run for president. I can't think why in the world did she put her name on that foundation. She could have built sort of right. a Chinese wall. Right. I thought, what in the world did she have to put her name on? Because she now has got herself into a controversy, whether a legitimate one or an illegitimate one. I think there will be one other controversy. It may be covered in the book, but if not, I think it will naturally flow from the book. And that is, what has this foundation done to basically provide the lifestyle of the Clintons? I mean, uh, 2013, they fought their reports with the IRS for their, uh, for their contributions and their expenditures. They received $294 million. They spent $223 million. They say 12% of that, or roughly $27, $26 million, was money that was spent on their overhead. Uh, and how much that went to the care and feeding of, of Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton. For example, the person who was in charge of fundraising for the foundation is now the fundraising director for what? her presidential campaign. That shows to me that, there's a, that there are no boundaries between this charitable foundation and her political ambitions. Well, I um, look forward to uh, seeing the book on May 5th to see uh, what's so there. I. So am you know. I'm looking forward to seeing Brett Baer's report about it this week. He's read the book, and his reporting <laughs> on it will be, uh, I think, very interesting. He got one of those embargo copies. I didn't. Yeah, anyway, I did. Carl, nice to see you. You bet. And straight ahead.